Welcome back to season two of Snubs and Dubs, where we've been talking about the snubs and dubs of the 87th Academy Award for Best Picture. I'm your host, Kyle Tobias, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Jason Miller. Jason, how's it going? Oh, it's going good, Kyle. Good. I'm still in my work clothes. <laughs> yeah. This is still business matters. You just like stumbled out of work and ended up here. I did. Wow. With a little Timmy's on the way, yeah, of course. You gotta get drank up. And you got the Beebs brew. I do have the Beebs brew. For Snubs it. and uh, gloves? Snubs and gloves. <laughs> so, so. An impromptu Teams brew Tim's Beebs crew. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah. It's like your standard fair iced coffee with mm. a little French vanilla in there. Nice. Cool. I saw Michael Buble do a video or like a TikTok about the Beebs brew. And hmm. I, I think he liked it as well. Oh, yeah, good so. for him. Good for I thought you were going to end Buble. that at, I saw Michael Buble. No. Hard cut. <laughs> That'd be cool, though. That looks like a nice sweet. guy. Yeah. I'd ask for a free lifetime supply of bubbly, though, because I love that shit. You got one chance, <laughs> one opportunity to get that lifetime supply. Yeah. You might as well take it. He's kind of like a leprechaun. If you catch him, you get a lifetime <laughs> supply of bubbly. Did you watch anything in the last week? No, I did not. That's totally fair. Yeah. Is it? Yes. yes. How what did you watch? <laughs> I saw two things. I watched Jurassic World Dominion. Ooh, I, in my not watching any movies, <laughs> didn't watch that one on purpose. But what did you think of it? Uh, I think you made the better decision. Yes. Um, oh, I knew it. It's like two and a half hours of oh. like the most mundane Jurassic Park stuff. Yep. I don't think they've ever really hit a banger after the first movie. Yeah, there's been like a hundred movies yeah. since. It's incredible yeah. the amount that they can still run away with it, despite only the <laughs> first one really being of note. I've heard two is good. Yeah, I've heard that too. It's been a while since yeah. I've seen it, so I'm, I can't remember anything about it. But And, and Jurassic World is okay, but it's kind is of it? like that The Force Awakens thing where is it's it? almost pretty much the same sort of stuff. All like just like repeat it again for nostalgia's sake. But yeah. yeah, it's been a while since I saw that one too, so... I remember watching that and then thinking to myself, that was bad. I'm never watching one of these again. And here I am, a man of my word, wow. not watching, <laughs> just not wanting to. So. Yeah, no, that's fair. I went with Molly and I had seen the second one. We went to theaters. And this it, is the third? This is the third I Jurassic track. World one. Yeah. I'm sorry. I saw the second one in Newfoundland. Yeah. Uh, it was like a rainy ass day and we were like, well, let's go. And yeah. so we, we just stumbled into it. Don't remember a thing about it. Had to watch like a YouTube review. Yeah. But Molly didn't even see the second one before yeah. going into this one. And I think she was fine. I was just like, there's some clones and shit. Yeah. And I, don't I can't know. imagine it would matter too yeah. much. But then this movie's not even like that much about the dinosaurs. It's about locusts? No. <laughs> you know what we're here for? The dinosaurs yeah. in Jurassic World. Not the bugs. <laughs> this isn't bug yeah. world. And it was just like such a contrived excuse to get like a plot going yeah. because obviously you want it to be about the dinosaurs. But at this point, the dinosaurs are in the real world. Like dinosaurs have moved all, all, like over around the world and they're just with humans, which in concept sounds cool, uh -huh. but they didn't focus on that. What? They focus <laughs> on the fact that another corporation has been oh. like manufacturing prehistoric locusts and they're like destroying crops. And so now what is the <laughs> okay, I get the original Jurassic World, the Jurassic Park wanted yeah. to make an amusement park with dinosaurs. Yes. That's cool as yeah. shit. I get that. What is the point of creating <laughs> locust hordes? I don't know. It's like, and oh shit, man, we got too much wheat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go fuck up the wheat supply real quick. Uh, yeah, no, not good. And I will yeah. easily forget about it like so quickly. Yeah. I've already kind of mostly forgotten about it, except for the fact that there were locusts. <laughs> that was so <laughs> absurd to me. Yeah. yeah. No, I didn't even watch it. I'm going to say it's bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that might sound unfair. And it is. <laughs> what else did you watch, Kyle? Um, well, I've been watching Barry season three what and it finished. Barry? Barry is a show by Bill Hader and starring Bill oh, Hader and also I love by a, a good lot of Bill Hader. Yeah. But it's like at this point in season three, like it started as a comedy about a former Marine turned hitman who is right. hired to assassinate an actor and ends up getting caught up in this acting school and wanting to become an actor himself. Mm -hmm. I remember you mentioning yeah. this now. That is the original concept. Where we are now, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the dinosaurs have entered normal human <laughs> yeah. civilization again. It is like, it's still like a funny show and there's some moments that are really funny and some characters that are really funny. I like, I love Noho Hank. He's this mm -hmm. just like 
gangster guy, but he's so flamboyant at the same time. And the actor who plays him, the name escapes him, but he is just so good at every scene he's in. He steals the like the whole show, but it's not a comedy anymore. <laughs> it is like so dark and grim. And like, oh my god! I mean, the actors are giving it like everything. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. this is an Emmy-winning series at this point for their acting. Like Henry Wrinkler and Bill Hader have won acting awards for this. But like everyone is just giving it their all, and it's it's fucking intense and great. Wow. It's a great show. Yeah, incredible. Highly recommend. If a yeah. show can do that much of a tone twister and still be good, that's a good show. Yeah, it is one of those shows that does usually balance it very well. Mm-hmm. Like it's able to be light and funny, but also be very dark and, and like emotionally impactful. And yeah, I always recommend it to people because it's just such a good show. Yeah. Well, interesting. Yeah, that's it. Ah, well. Except for this movie. Ooh, course, transition. Season two of Snubs and Doves has been covering the films from the year 2014. And for episode 20, we are talking about Under the Skin, which also will show that it's a 2013 in some places. Mm-hmm. But I, I also double checked this one like a yep. hundred times. And it is on the list of eligible films for the 87th Academy Awards. So don't at me. Okay. See, what I did when I saw the 2013 film is think to myself, nah, I trust Kyle. I'm not going to look into this <laughs> and moved on. And that's what I think the audience should do too. Yeah. There were choices. Like I was, I saw a screenshot of my original schedule for this and I had like Ex Machina, which is not a 2014 film. Ooh. And I had to clarify that. And we moved some other stuff around. Mm. So let me tell you, this is the last time I think that we're going to encounter this. Where yeah, it's a film ready? that looks like it's 2013 or maybe another year, but it is this year. Yeah. We've had a couple of those. Yeah. There's been some year issues this yeah. year. <laughs> this <laughs> whole year's kind of an issue. <laughs> this year's kind of confused, but yeah, it just happens because like festivals happen and then doesn't get a wide release. And then because it doesn't get a wide release, it doesn't qualify in that year. It's uh, uh, Anyways, we're talking about Under the Skin. Had you seen it before? No, I have not seen it. I did not know this thing existed. <laughs> And probably because it wasn't the biggest movie to ever exist. Nope. Nope. How about you, Kyle? Have you ever seen this before? I hadn't seen it. I own it. And I had been meaning to watch it because I had heard good things. But this was the first time actually sitting down and watching it. Hmm. And I was very excited to do so. Yeah. Yeah. It's always been like a white whale type movie for me. Like I wanted to Mm -hmm. watch it. And and you own it. I finally did it. Yeah. Huh. Remember in Moby Dick, (laughs) Captain Ahab didn't already own Moby Dick. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, it was just one of those that just sat on my shelf for a long time. And it was, I think it's one of those where I thought I needed to be in the mood. Mm -hmm. And granted, I did because. Probably did. (laughs) Because this kind of consumed the rest of my week of media consumption afterwards. Yes. Because most of my time after watching this movie was spent looking up shit about this Mm -hmm. movie. (laughs) I hate that I watched this last night with not much time in between then and now to be like, what the fuck happened? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Your processing time is still like at the start. I still exist in that fictional world of Scotland (laughs) where this all happened. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, if you were interested in under the skin or the book it was based on, I've included the links to the physical media related to it in the show notes. If you buy through that link, it'll help out our show. Or if you have any other Amazon shopping to do, follow the general link to help out our show in the process. A reminder that this is going to be a spoiler filled conversation. So if you haven't seen under the skin yet and you want to go ahead and do so, I've also included time codes in the show notes so you can skip around to your heart's desire. But without further ado, let's get into it. Under the Skin is directed by Jonathan Glazer and written by Walter Campbell and Jonathan Glazer based on Under the Skin by Michael Faber, which is a 2000 novel. Jonathan Glazer decided to adapt the novel after finishing his debut film Sexy Beast Oh, um, <laughs> in 2000. It's so funny because I saw a letterbox review that was like talking about Jonathan Glazer and they put in brackets Sexy Beast next to him. <laughs> and I was like, that's funny. They must really like him. But then no, that's just the film that he made. <laughs> So now, like, every time people want to talk about Jonathan Glazer, they can put Sexy Beast in it, and it looks like he's saying Jonathan Glazer come, is a sexy beast. A sexy but- beast. <laughs> Noted sexual creature. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a big dub move for, uh, for Jonathan is- Glazer. <laughs> yeah. Make your first film called Sexy Beast, so now every time somebody refers to you, they can mention Sexy Beast. Oh, that anyway. yeah, means we need to make a movie called Really Cool Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, Jonathan Glazer didn't begin working on Under the Skin until after he finished his second film in 2004. Glazer's producers, James Wilson, sent him a script that closely adapted the novel, 
Glazer admired it, but had no interest in filming it, saying, I knew then that I absolutely didn't want to film the book, but I still wanted to make the book a film. Hmm. So, yeah, as far as I could tell, this movie does not that closely follow the book. Yeah. But it is in concept kind of the same. I guess. Similar vibes. Yeah. They're going for the same kind of thing. Yeah. So just throwing that out yeah. so you people know, know. You throw a little based on so you can't get sued after. <laughs> <laughs> and to have a little IP attachment, you Ooh, know. that's smart. Nice things up a little bit. But mm-hmm. yeah. This stars Scarlett Johansson as the female. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of like, is there a second character? Yeah, I wrote uh, Jeremy McWilliams as the Batman slash motorcycle man. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the only major recurring character. Yeah. Uh, but as we'll later come to discover, a bunch of real people, mm. not not mm. that actors aren't real people, but like oh, random aren't. people off the street <laughs> <laughs> were uh, parts in this movie, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. It has a runtime of 108 minutes and it premiered at the Telluride Film Festival in August 2013 before going wide in March of 2014 in the UK and April 2014 in the US. So Jason, Mm -hmm. what did you think of Under the Skin? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) How am I supposed to know or form opinions or thoughts on this movie? It's weird. It is weird. something. What did you think immediately after finishing watching it? Uh, I was taken by it. Yes. I I was just like glued to the screen. That's Mm -hmm. like one thing I'll give this movie credit for. Like I was, what's the word? Encapsulated? Yeah. Captured? Yeah. Something like that. I was just like riveted the entire time watching this. And it does seem like a quiet movie sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it can be very methodical and it could seem slow, but I was just like so invested. Yeah. And I really liked it. Yeah. That is the one thing I will say. It got slow near the end. Yeah. And I was really in it for the majority of it, but it kind of started dragging by the end. Yeah. But it is unlike movies yeah. in general. It's so unexplaining of what's yeah. going on mm-hmm. in a really good, fresh way yes. where it doesn't need to hold your hand at all. It refuses to. It pushes you away from it. Straight up. Like you'll read through the quote plot. Yeah. But <laughs> Which- there's like... It doesn't actually tell you what's happening, no. really. It like it gives you the clues to imply what's happening, mm-hmm. but there's never any exposition as to what is going on mm-hmm. in this movie. You are just expected to sit there and observe and watch what's happening and see Scarlett Johansson talk to these men and then like observe her facial expressions and how she views her body and like looks at things and interacts with different people. And then you kind of like follow her character arc through that but it's very like she's doing she's not doing a lot no which is but it's very subtle and it's it's really cool it's really cool yeah well do you want to get into that what might be considered a plot (laughs) Plot, yeah in glasgow a motorcyclist retrieves an inert young woman from the roadside and places her in the back of a van where a naked woman dons her clothes i like that most of this plot's just someone wikipedia kind of observing shit <laughs> like there's, there's no yeah. thread so it's just going to be a statement of facts that occurred yeah, in this movie. pretty much yeah after buying clothes and makeup at a shopping center the woman drives the van from town to town picking up men she lures into a dilapidated house and i will have you know there is no conversation spoken until 15 minutes in yeah i know this because when you try and get an AMC Plus free subscription to watch this movie, you only get the Danish version, but you don't notice until 15 minutes in when the first conversation happens. <laughs> no fucking way. And then you're like, well, at 15 minutes in and nothing seemed to miss so far, this is weird. So you just kind of go for a little bit, but then you notice that like, oh, these words and mouth movements, those are not syncing up. And then you check the audio settings and yep. It's Danish. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, so what did you do? I rented it on YouTube. Oh my God. That's so funny. <laughs> Skip the first 15 minutes, hit play. <laughs> <laughs> well, as the man undresses, following the woman into a void, he is submerged in a liquid abyss. Th- those are back to back sentences. Yeah. <laughs> the story made it sound weird, but that's kind of what happens. At a beach, the woman attempts to pick up a swimmer, but he is interrupted by the cries of a drowning couple attempting to rescue their dog as it is pulled out to sea. The swimmer rescues the husband, but the husband rushes back into the water to save his wife and both drown. As the swimmer lies exhausted on the beach, the woman strikes his head with a rock, drags him to the van, and drives away, ignoring the couple's distraught baby. Later that night, the motorcyclist retrieves the swimmer's belongings, ignoring the baby who is still on the beach. The woman visits a nightclub and picks up another man. At the house, he follows her into the void and is submerged in the liquid. Suspended beneath the surface, he sees the swimmer floating naked beside him. 
alive but bloated and almost immobile. When he reaches out to touch him, the swimmer's body collapses and a red mass empties through a trough. The next day, the woman receives a rose from a street vendor purchased from another man in traffic. She listens to a radio report about the missing family from the beach. The woman enters a dark room and is examined by the motorcyclist. She seduces a lonely man with facial tumors but lets him leave after examining herself in a mirror. These happen sequentially but are so unconnected. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm, I'm listening to you read it back and like I can pinpoint where it is but like also... There's so much yeah. happening in these moments, too. The motorcyclist intercepts the man and bundles him into a car, then sets out in pursuit of the woman with three other motorcyclists. In the Scottish Highlands, the woman abandons the van in the fog. She walks to a restaurant and attempts to eat cake, but wretches and spits it out. In a bus, she meets a man who offers to help her. At his house, he prepares a meal for her, and they watch television. Alone in a room, she examines her body in a mirror. They visit a ruined castle where the man carries her over a puddle and helps her down some steps. At his house, they kiss and begin to have sex, but the woman stops and examines her genitals. Wandering in a forest, the woman meets a commercial logger and shelters in a boffy. She wakes up to find the logger molesting her. She runs into the wilderness, but he catches and attempts to rape her. He tears her skin, revealing a black, featureless body. As the woman extricates herself from the skin, the man douses her in fuel and burns her alive. Elsewhere, the motorcyclist stands on a mountaintop and looks at a snowy field. The end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow, that is... A loose series of events that yep. doesn't seem like it makes any sense at nope. all. But what are your interpretation of the events that happened? I mean, I don't exactly know where it all starts, but clearly mm-hmm. she is an extraterrestrial yeah. taking the form of a beautiful human woman to seduce dudes to eat. Yeah, I think so. I think so. That's yeah. what it feels like. And along the way, she starts becoming human. And I think maybe she got too close to the human element when trying to seduce the men that she realized that, you know, there's a human condition here. When she sees the dad after getting rescued, jump back into the water to save his wife, who's trying to save a dog and they all die. Yeah. Maybe that awakens something in her. But at some point, she starts to kind of lose her feeling of self and wants to become human. So she tries it out with the dude from the bus. Yeah. And then... When he tries to have sex with her, she gets confused. She never had sex ed. She didn't go through elementary school. She wouldn't know what's about to happen. See, I interpreted that a little differently, that sex scene, because it looked like he was trying to put it in. Yes. But something was blocking. Oh. And so I think what ended up happening was she doesn't actually have like human anatomy internally. That makes sense. And she just has the layer of skin. And so when he tried to, you know penetrate yeah. there was nothing to penetrate it was Interesting. just like her body like her yeah. alien body so she went to look at it and you know examined that there was nothing actually there to do oh and maybe that's when she realized she's not a person she <laughs> needs to run into the woods because that's what happens next well i think that was just like a point of frustration for her because yeah. like yeah i think you're right i think she starts observing human kindness mm-hmm. like she falls and people help her up somebody gives her, her a rose and even though like the guy's like bleeding all over the rose like he still does it anyways yeah like, she can't bleed but she like is, is so fascinated by it and so i think when she starts kind of feeling those feelings and are probably feelings that she's never felt before as an extraterrestrial mm-hmm. being she you know she tries to eat the cake she tries to have some sort of the human experience including sex and Mm -hmm. actual romantic love. But then obviously she can't have that because she's not human. And so I think that sex was a realization for her that she can't really have this. Mm -hmm. And that's when she also sees some of the harmful sides of humanity too, when the guy tries to rape her and then ultimately everything kind of falls apart. So Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe she lets the man with the facial tumors go Because she feels some kind of empathy for him. He clearly has a different lived experience than all of her other victims. Mm -hmm. And he's allowed to go. Although I don't think he goes very far and is naked the whole time. So Mm -hmm. not the best way to live out the rest of your life. Yeah. (laughs) And like he's the only one that when they enter the void, he's aware of his surroundings. Yeah. Like every other man that enters that place is so fixated on Scarlett Johansson that they just walk into the Mm -hmm. you know the sauce and then disappear (laughs) the men get lost in the sauce (laughs) (laughs) but he's like aware of his surroundings and he's unsure and i think yeah she takes pity on him and just lets him go instead of turning him to mush Mm. that that scene where the one man from i think the nightclub is in there with the man who was on the beach 
And it's just like a quiet scene and like there's like no audio going on except for maybe like a little bit of watery noises. And like you could see the skin like detaching from the man. But then all of a sudden it's almost like a jump scare Mm -hmm. where like the substance of the man just like just like goes away. Like through a straw. Yeah, And like then he's just like floating there just like skin. Mm -hmm. It's there. Like that was Fuck, but it was cool. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah. I really enjoyed like the both the visual element of that and like throughout the movie, the audio, both like oh the, the sound God. engineering and the score is amazing. The score is really good. It's yeah. incredible. And that scene especially really stood out as both like a really cool visual mixed with a really cool audio. Like now yeah. one is probably my most memorable moment from that movie is the dude mm-hmm. getting sucked through slurp. a straw. <laughs> just getting yeah. slurp right up. Yeah, because it's like the only time you really see what actually happens to these people that she lures in Mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't know. It's everything like the whole mood of it. I I just really liked. And I think you have the correct interpretation. I don't know if there is a correct interpretation. There's probably whichever you want to take from it. But yeah, I I do feel like, yeah, she started feeling things, tried to act on them and then, you know, it, it didn't work out. And that scene at the end where she starts losing her skin was also like really cool, like really powerful. Mm-hmm. I, just, I really enjoyed it. And I actually am really intrigued by the idea that extraterrestrials look a lot like us, but yeah. not quite. Because mm-hmm. like, a lot of places try and make extraterrestrials look super like freaky and, and weird and cool, which is weird and cool. Yeah. Star Wars, great job. But it's also <laughs> kind of scarier to think that extraterrestrials might look just like us. Yeah, and just be among us and in a fictional land of Scotland. A <laughs> Okay, what is your read on the motorcycle dude? What did you think he was there for? I think he is like her manager, like yeah. basically <laughs> the guy in charge of like ensuring that she does her job basically. Mm-hmm. And I think her job essentially is just to lure men into turn into like liquid and then, yeah. and then feed the aliens. And I don't know if he's like recruiting or getting more skins too, because like obviously they keep the skin and then at the end there's more motorcycle men. Yeah. So maybe like they're also trying to expand their, you know, secret invasion, you know, Marvel don't at me, but like <laughs> um, could be that too. And I think this is another thing that I saw on like s- some of my exploration of other people's interpretations of it too, is the woman at the start wasn't just like a random human woman, but was another hunter Oh, who went through the same sort of path that Scarlett Johansson did where she started to feel emotions. And that's why she's like completely numb, but you do see a single tear escape from her. Oh, and then they just like take her clothes and then move on. Mm-hmm. And so I think like these hunter hunters, like go through the same sort of path and start to feel human experience. And that's why the motorcycle man was so like eager to get her because she obviously he, he that's like their weapon, their tool, yeah. their hunter to get all their flesh. And so, wanted to handle her and he's the one that handles that woman at the start too i, don't, it, I like that interpretation cool. i think that's really interesting yeah wow so many cool things yeah. that's what a movie that doesn't over explain <laughs> things does to you it makes you think i love it i love a movie that makes me think yeah, because i want to think about a movie yeah i don't like to just like feel like how i felt at the end of jurassic world dominion just like <laughs> so dumbfounded about you know the 150 minutes of movie that was in front of me Mm -hmm. and i just didn't think about it afterwards this like i've been thinking about for the entire week yeah and it's like just like some small indie movie with scarlett johansson interacting with random scottish men yeah and i i can't stop thinking about it and i like we'll get to this later but i really want to watch it again yeah i want to like listen i want to watch a bunch of fan theories Mm. and then watch it again too and see how i like their interpretations and whatnot there is definitely like a good amount of video essays and articles online that you can find about people like interpretations of this. And I feel like a lot of them have that same interpretation of like, Mm -hmm. she does start to feel human emotions. And really this is us viewing the human experience from the lens of an alien who is also trying to view the human experience. And like it, there's so many cool interpretations within that though. Like I mentioned with the, the hunter also being a hunter at the start and then her just like replacing that role. People will go down into the details about the ant she sees at the beginning and the fly she sees in the middle. Like just like. Oh, I forgot like about that. the ant. They spend quite a bit of time. Like he yeah. gets some substantial screen time. Yeah. He might be the second highest screen time <laughs> in the film. Well, like that ant at the start, like 
I don't take any credit for these thoughts because, you know, these were from other people, but ants are ultimately communal creatures that serve a queen Mm -hmm. and they're just like building for the greater good kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And so it seems so small and insignificant on its own, but then they have that shot of it up close and it's so intimidating. Yeah. And so that is essentially the hunter in this, and like the Scarlett Johansson character in this sense where she is just kind of like a cog in the machine, but she also is obviously very scary mm-hmm. and killy. And, but then the fly is a flight creature batting against a window clearly wants to be free She's trying to escape. Yes. Oh, there's yeah. another kind of comparison between the two. Yeah. A lot of people step on ants and I would like Scarlett Johansson to step on me. <laughs> That scene at the beach is haunting, though. It is. The baby. Yeah, the you baby. left him there. <laughs> right. But also, dumb as fuck parents. Like, I, yeah. I understand uh, the love for a family dog. That is That, that would haunt me if mm-hmm. that happened to, like, my dog. Horrible. Yeah. Don't like it at all. But the fact that they both ran in mm-hmm. and abandoned their child. Yes. How did one of them not just stand? I mean, I, I get it at the end of the day. Like, mm-hmm. they're, they want to save their people. Yeah. And it's about compassion and blah, 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 blah. But at the same time, your dog went in, couldn't get back out. Your wife went in, clearly can't get back out. Mm-hmm. You there with your child. Mm-hmm. Are you thinking I'm going to go in there and be able to solve this situation? No. You throw the kid in and see what he can do. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> especially when like the swimmer rescues the dad yeah clearly he's not making it to his wife who clearly is not making it to the dog especially at that moment you call it quits and he goes back you download tinder (laughs) you you take you and your son it's just the two of you now sorry bucko yeah but you don't go back in and abandon your kid there's an alien nearby yeah what are you doing oh my god i want another like spinoff movie where the swimmer doesn't get killed by Scarlett Johansson and now he's responsible for this kid. And this guy who just came on like a getaway from the stress trip to Scotland's oh now a God. father. <laughs> What's he going to do? Now it's like a fun comedy drama yeah. sort of thing. Oh, man. Oh. I mean, it's funny you say spinoff because they're actually, I think, going to do a TV series oh, about Under the Skin. So. Interesting. Yeah. If they are they going to bring ScarJo back though? Or is this going to go gonna... different? Probably different. I think they'll do yeah. like same concept, different alien mm-hmm. sort of thing but it, yeah i think it's been in like in a bidding war or something I, I read a small article about it but jonathan glazer is a part of it and a24 was interested Ooh. as well so yeah so yeah. maybe we'll uh, get more of that jonathan glazer sexy beast <laughs> <laughs> do you yeah. have any other thoughts or interpretations uh well when i was looking trying to find where to watch the movie i mm. did see the rotten tomato score and i saw that it was like critics fucking loved it yeah. and audiences despised it <laughs> and i knew i was in for a treat i knew i was in for something either one way or another this is going to be either very good or the worst yeah and i'm a little surprised that audiences didn't like this more i get it mm-hmm. because i mean like it doesn't hand you anything like yeah. it does require you to think about it Mm -hmm. or read about it or look something up about it. And I can see a lot of people leaving the theater just like, you know, your average movie goer and being like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. I, that was garbage. I'm not thinking a moment about this more. And I do think that this movie gets better when you think about it and when Mm -hmm. you do interpret it and when you can sit back and appreciate everything it's doing while not doing a lot. Like it's cool in that sense. And so I, I think average cinema goers like maybe aren't, in the same place as that and like they're not Mm -hmm. in in the same mindset but i can see that i also think this is a movie that i enjoyed watching more at home than i might have in theaters Uh, i think some of the visuals and the audio would have been really cool to experience in a Mm. theater but it was something about watching this in my own house that (laughs) felt like it was the best way to do it yeah and I do think a lot of people are finding this movie after the fact. Yeah. Because it, it does have like decent word of mouth, especially in the kind of cinephile community. Mm-hmm. People are like, this is one of those kind of in the same realm as 2001 A Space Odyssey where it's surreal and you have to think about it, but it's also like really good. So, yeah. But anyways, Rotten Tomatoes, you were right. 84% critics and 55% audiences. Yeah. Yeah. IMDb, 6.3. Metacritic 80. Well, so, interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's actually also an interesting difference between the IMDb and the fan score on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. Can I feel the IMDb to be lower if 45% of the reviews were unfavorable? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah I guess people who liked it loved it. Yeah. That makes well, sense. Yeah. Clearly. Uh, like to have a meta 
Critics score in the 80s is pretty good. That's hard to do. Yeah, Yeah, take Scarlett Johansson being naked on screen. (laughs) (laughs) This was the first film she was actually naked in. Oh, That's an interesting fact I did not put in. (laughs) She packed a lot into the first one. Oh, yeah. (laughs) She did, yeah. A lot of people did. There was not that many clothes in this movie. No. And those were real people, too. So that's very interesting. Good Uh, for them. We'll get to that in the more interesting facts. But yeah, box office wise. It has a budget of thirteen point three million. It only made seven point two three million. Oh, that's a lot lower than I thought. Yeah, I didn't think this would be a buster kind of movie, but yeah. that was like half. Yeah, that's so, not good. Yeah, and it's interesting that they're making a TV series out of this kind of bomb, but like this is not a very marketable movie, mm-hmm. and I don't think they probably marketed it very well because it's hard to explain what this is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it it sucks because I I do hope that people watch this mm-hmm. because it's cool. It is if yeah, this is like an if you're interested in movies, this is a hit. Yeah, I think this is one where like if you're starting to kind of venture off the path of mainstream, mm-hmm. like this might if you're just there might be a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. But if you're like if you've dabbled in that sort of stuff before, like this is definitely. It's got a lot of substance. It's got a lot of. It does. It makes it. It's a thinker. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the number i don't think it landed on the box it, office yeah, either, it, so um, number one billion yeah how about our scores though see therein lies the interesting question yeah which begins with kyle how are you giving this for enjoyment i give it a four <laughs> interesting yeah i'm gonna go just a touch lower at 3.5 because mm. i feel like it did drag just a touch sometimes yes. but yeah it's in it's meant to be a slow movie but it's still a slow movie mm-hmm uh, what is your craft? Uh, four as well. Mm-hmm. Some of the stuff that they did, I know some of it was augmented by CGI, but like the scenes in that void, I don't know how the fuck they did that. I couldn't tell Crazy. you. <laughs> like yeah. I, I, I read something kind of about it where like they were in like a mirrored room and there was a pool and then there was CGI. But like also I still don't get I need to see it. <laughs> like I need yes. to see it like past how it looks to actually understand because yeah. It looks real, like it looked mm-hmm. entirely in camera, but it was so yeah. real. Like, I don't know. It's like, uh, clearly not. Until I see a rock hard naked <laughs> Scottish man in that shot, I don't know how it worked. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to give this 4.5 for craft. Nice. I don't know how I feel about shooting on like just in a mall because I'm assuming mm. that was just in a mall. Yep. It had the feeling of that. And I don't know how that makes me feel about the craftiness of it. But yeah. the rest of the movie is very well put together. The ah, oh man, like the, the score, the score, so incredible. Good. The visuals are so good. I'm going four point five on that bad. That's boy. totally fair. What's your execution? I gave it a four, which seems weird for this type of movie because there's not a lot of like writing, and Scarlett Johansson isn't doing a lot. Mm-hmm. But I think the execution of what they wanted to do was pretty on point yeah. for what showed up on screen, and so I, I gave it high marks for that. I'm also going to go for in that one because you see clearly a very well thought out concept yeah. and they got you there. Yeah. Rewatchability. I gave this a 3.5. I think it's probably one that would be difficult to watch sometimes because yeah. like it is kind of one of those mood movies, but it is one that I am excited to watch again. Mm-hmm. So, and I would recommend to people to watch too. That's true. I'm going to go three on this one. Fair. I would rewatch it, but got to be in the right space to mm-hmm. do it. All right, well, for scores, Kyle, that is going to bring you to a 15.5 out of 20 for a 78%, yep. and me a 15 out of 20 for a 75%. Yeah, seems right to me. Yeah. All right, do you want your rankings? Yeah. All right, Kyle, let me, let me read you off your little rankings here. Okay. You have from top to bottom, Grand Budapest Hotel, Paddington, Captain America, Guardians of the Galaxy, Dawn, Interstellar, Gone Girl, Nightcrawler, Lego, Selma, John Wick, What We Do in the Shadows, Boyhood, Snowpiercer, Babadook, Imitation Game, Big Hero 6, Foxcatcher, American Sniper, The Theory of Everything. Where is Under the Skin going? This is my new number nine Ooh. under Nightcrawler. Mm-hmm. But over Lego. Over very similar movies, this on Lego. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For my rankings, I have Grand Budapest, Paddington, Dawn, Interstellar, Gone, Girl, Nightcrawler, John Wick, Selma, Guardians of the Galaxy, What We Do in the Shadows, Lego, Babadook, Captain America, Snowpiercer, Boyhood, Big Hero 6, The Theory of Everything, Imitation Game, Fox Catcher, American Sniper. This is also going to go above Lego for me, 
but that will bring it to number 11. Nice. All right, well, do you want to see what people thought on Letterboxd? I would love to know. Okay, so it has a 3.6 out of 5 on Letterboxd, so not bad. They all do. (laughs) Every movie does. This is a four and a half by Carson Rehnquist. He's a YouTuber. Have you seen him? No, I haven't. He's a good YouTuber. Oh, good to know. But anyways, his review is never in a million years did I think a movie that would make me contemplate my existence would also have Darude Sandstorm in it. <laughs> Which for context, this is Darude Sandstorm. Anyways, yeah. that's. Hey, it. I think that was short enough. That I'm not going to get sued. You got the gist. Yeah. All right, so this is one and a half stars by Nice Guys. Yeah, I'm way too dumb to understand films like this, so I'm going to go watch a Seth Rogen movie. (laughs) (laughs) This man has already achieved the self-awareness that um, that Scarlett Johansson's character attempted to get all movie long. (laughs) He knows his lane. He drives within it. Uh, this review has no rating, but it is a review by Sydney. I thought this was a great movie the same way that sometimes I see a joke and think, wow, that's a really funny joke without cracking a smile. <laughs> I totally get that. Yeah. Five stars on a rewatch by David. If my wife ever recklessly dove into treacherous waters to save our dog and left me and the baby on shore, guess what? I'm staying with the baby. Yeah. <laughs> Somehow the baby's smarter. Yeah. <laughs> He's got better survival instincts than you do. And lastly, four and a half on a rewatch by Johnny. I don't think my roommates are going to let me recommend any more movies. <laughs> <laughs> this would absolutely. De- First of all, you should have your movie picking cred devastated after this. If you're going, if you're picking a movie to watch with the roomies on a fun night, yeah. you go under this. This is co- totally out like, of pocket. <laughs> guys, let's watch Passchendaele. Like, <laughs> I haven't seen Schindler's List in a while. Like, come on, you're not picking the vibe right. You get your rights removed. You can't pick music anymore either. Screw it. You suck. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Academy Awards? No. Uh, Dick gets some BAFTA nominees, though. Oh, interesting. Uh, was nominated for Best British Film and also Best Original Music. Oh. No dubs, though. No. Uh, just I think, nominees. I think we've already covered the Best British Film winner, I believe. Probably was it the imitation game or something. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, theory of everything. Oh god, I it, was I hope theory not. Of everything. it might have been though. I think it was. I'm gonna quickly Google this. The theory of everything was yeah. the bre- best British film from 2014. Disagree, but yes. okay. Continue. It also was nominated for the Alliance of Women Film Journalists Award for Best Depiction of Nudity, Sexuality, or Seduction for Scarlett Johansson. I agree. <laughs> yeah. More seduction should result in men being eaten. Yeah. <laughs> this sets a beautiful precedent. Yeah. I was also fascinated watching her just like look at her body. Yeah. It's like you understood what she was trying to do, mm-hmm. even though obviously it's Scarlett Johansson and, mm-hmm. you know. Very beautiful. Yes. But like I, it was you could see it in her eyes, like how interested she was in her own mm-hmm. skin. Yeah. So wow, hey. look at that. It also feels like her body wasn't edited. It feels like that's just a shot of how she looks. Yeah. And it was allowed to exist in its actual form. Yeah. It was very refreshing. It was. Yeah. And the last note I have is that a lot of attention by critics groups was given to Mika Levi's original score. Oh, good. It had 11 wins out of 19 nominations from critics groups for its Ooh, original score. Impressive. Yeah. And I agree. Like it did. It's really well. It does a really good job yeah. of pulling you in, setting the tone. Mm-hmm. And it does it with like an interesting, like kind of like equipment set. Yeah. Like it just kind of pulls sounds from anywhere. Mm-hmm. It's, it's good. It's good. Interesting facts time. They created yeah. Scotland for this. <laughs> All right. The men lured into the van by Scarlett Johansson's character were not actors. Kind of mentioned that before. But Jonathan Glazer had hidden cameras installed in the van and only informed the men afterwards that they were going to be in a movie or that they were in a movie. Hmm. Glazer said the men were then, quote, talked through what extremes they would have to go through if they agreed to take part in the film once they understood what we were doing. Interesting. Which means they, yeah, the real guys went and got naked and walked into that pool. Yeah, which does raise some questions. Like, when did they know? I'm assuming while in the car, they didn't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was like at their destination. They like pulled up like, you are on hidden camera. We yeah. got cameras there and there. Yeah. That's Scarlett Johansson. She's not actually <laughs> into you. But second question, mm-hmm. all of these men who entered the pool, 
rock ripping hard. Oh, yes. Was that just <laughs> from seeing Scarlett Johansson in some undies? Maybe, but also I think that was like a narrative choice too. I think yeah. they wanted them to be because obviously mm-hmm. these men are supposed to be turned on by mm-hmm. Scarlett Johansson and be like infatuated and like tunnel vision yeah. onto her. So that was probably a choice, that but was, also. No, yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering like operationally how they got <laughs> their talent that hard because I imagine being in front of, you're not a trained actor. This isn't, you're yeah. not a porn star. They know how to do that. Yeah. If you're just some guy off the street, can you do that under pressure? That's, it's, yeah, that's interesting. Cause it's, but also could be a double-edged sword there too, because they're not a trained actor and a trained actor in a sex scene might not get hard. Whereas oh. an, an untrained actor mm-hmm. in a, this is such a weird conversation, <laughs> in a um, weird sex scene might get hard accidentally or unintentionally. Yeah, but true. I, I feel like it was a narrative choice, mm-hmm. but it made sense. Yeah. Anyway. Kyle, how are babies made? <laughs> They're left on the beach for you. Oh, no. That's how babies are unmade. <laughs> uh, so one thing that I was curious about is how people didn't recognize her. But I guess despite her fame, uh, and mm-hmm. this was filmed in 2013, I should note right after the Avengers came out. Yeah. <laughs> and she was rarely recognized. I feel like it's the wig. Uh, with that way. hair, it kind of did enough. Yeah. But I think also at the end of the sentence is a lot of people couldn't believe that it was her. That would be it too. Yeah. yeah. So it, people might have seen her and been like, that looks like Scarlett Johansson, mm-hmm. but they don't actually put together that it is Scarlett Johansson. I bet she got like an extreme Tony Hawk treatment where everyone's <laughs> like, you look a lot like Scarlett Johansson. Has anyone <laughs> ever told you that? Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. So I mentioned that the only other actor at the start was Jeremy McWilliams that I actually made note of because he's the only like recurring character, mm-hmm. uh, but he's also not an actor. <laughs> what? He's, he's a just... championship motorcycle road racer. Okay. That makes sense because yeah. he's mostly on a motorcycle, yeah. mostly not speaking and clearly very good at motorcycling. Yeah. He was cast as the motorcyclist to handle the treacherous driving conditions of the Scottish Highlands. That makes sense. So yeah. Yeah. You don't really need a good actor for him. You just need a guy yeah. who can carry a woman and drive a car. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like had like a menacing gaze at her. Very menacing. Yeah. This film took nearly 10 years to make. And one of the early drafts of the script included a Scottish married couple who were revealed to be aliens in disguise. Brad Pitt was at the time cast as one half of that couple. Wow. Which half? I wonder. (laughs) (laughs) Just joke for the audience out there. That's interesting, though. Yeah. Yeah. I think that might have been one that was closer to the novel. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I feel like there's a fun dynamic where it's a couple where they can just go to a bar and be like, hey, we saw you from across the room. We dig your vibe. (laughs) (laughs) You want to come back with us? (laughs) Yeah. And I would believe Brad Pitt would be the male version of the Scarlett Johansson Absolutely. able to lure like men and women in. Oh, I could see Tom Cruise doing that too. Imagine him <laughs> going around trying to pick up people with his soulless eyes and <laughs> fancy smile. I mean, doesn't he do that already to get people to go to Scientology? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> the pool you're getting into is your knowledge of Scientology. <laughs> Uh, Eva Green, Gemma Adderton, January Jones, Abby Cornish, and Olivia Wilde were considered for the role of the female. It was eventually Scarlett Johansson who stayed on board for the film for four years before it reached its completed film date. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so when did this start filming then? I, I don't think it started filming until... 2013 or 2012. Okay. Yeah. So she probably was like, she got the role and then it was just kind of sitting in production limbo for a while. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Like, um, like I mentioned earlier, Jonathan Glazer wanted to do this film right after the novel came out, basically, which was in 2000, mm-hmm. but he decided to wait and didn't actually start working on it until 2004. Uh, and so then the script went through a bunch of revisions and then they went to that Brad Pitt Everyone like has era. a Brad Pitt yeah. phase. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's, it's understandable. And, and it wasn't until Scarlett Johansson got involved and they set this kind of vibe that mm-hmm. they were ready to go. So lastly, a paparazzi still of Scarlett Johansson in character falling down became a wildly popular internet meme, <laughs> which users would Photoshop Johansson into various situations. As the scene was shot with hidden cameras, it was not until the movie's release that it was revealed the fall was intentional. Have you seen this? You're no, I don't remember this I'm at all. I'm going to do a quick uh, goog because I looked this up and I recognized it. I don't, I've so never like, seen this before. Like this with her on a dolphin? Yeah, I've never seen that. I've never Interesting. Seen, I've it's never a funny, come across this funny thing. Just somehow. Oh, she's curling. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh yeah, somehow that has entirely eluded me. Well, interesting. I mean, yeah. I don't think it's been a popular meme for a while. Like I think when they were filming, this was probably a popular meme. Um, yeah. So if you are familiar with the memes of the early 2010s, you might know which one we're talking about. But otherwise, mm. look up Scarlett Johansson falling down meme and then you might be either reminded or have a refreshing new meme. <laughs> oh, man. Someone out there is putting in the work because <laughs> on Ranker, the 30 bu- the thirty plus best Scarlett Johansson falling down memes was last updated June 14th, 2019. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Someone's still working on this file. <laughs> Wow, that's cool. Uh, good for them. Yeah, you know, it's good to have a up. thing. You know, <laughs> yeah. Someone's still on the beat, like that baby's on the beach. Oh no! Someone <laughs> get that baby. All right. Any final thoughts under the skin? It's it's perplexing. Yeah. So many thoughts. Mm-hmm. Really All of them probably wrong. Under your skin, it does. Get, wow. That's what the movie's called. That because <laughs> it makes you think. How about you, Kyle? Any last thoughts? No, nah, it's good. It's a good time. Yeah, it's fun family fun. It is fun family. There's a whole family in there. There's a whole not family having fun. Have- They're not having fun. <laughs> There's a whole family in there. They don't finish the movie as a whole family. But- <laughs> oh no! Is that Batman? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Scottish Batman. <laughs> Beach man. <laughs> oh no! Oh. I don't understand a thing he's saying when he's trying yeah. to fight criminals. I just for a brief second had the thought in my mind that I should try a combined Scottish Batman accent and I I will not I cannot I couldn't I for a quick second my mouth started yeah. moving and nothing was sent down to that department because I can't figure yeah. out what that even remotely sounds like just mumble and growl I think that's yeah. pretty much the same thing there were times in here where like I thought I needed subtitles because yeah. of the Scottish people just talking as they normally speak. Yeah. Which is cool because that is literally how they're normally speaking because they are real people giving mm-hmm. real directions or talking to Scarlett Johansson. But the, I, Scottish people, how do you communicate? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. That's not the English language. No. When I switched it off Danish at the first time, I'm like, is this still Danish? What the <laughs> fuck is this guy saying? <laughs> at least Scarlett Johansson speaking English. But what is this? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. All right. Well, yeah. I want to thank you all for listening to season two, episode 20 of Snubs and Dubs. As always, you can find us everywhere on social media at Snubs and Dubs. That's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Letterboxd, etc. We're also on Good Pods, so make sure to check us out there and join our official Discord. We'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on Under the Skin or on this episode. So please send us a tweet or a message with a question, recommendation, or anything else. I'm also at Kyle Tobias and on Twitter, and Jason's at Wendy underscore Mills. Of course, all those links are going to be in the show notes. Make sure to leave a five star review. Share the show to everyone you know and check back next week for another episode. Here's a sneak peek of the film we're going to talk about. What is this madness, huh? Mm-hmm. There's carne asada. Check it out. Wow. Chef Big Dog up all night cooking. Shut up and taste this. Some amuse douche. Come here, guy. Look at that. You like it? Yeah. yeah. We're going to cook like this. We're being reviewed by the most important critic in the city. Now suddenly you're going to be an artist. Well, be an artist on your own time. It's my restaurant. The kitchen is my domain. That was our deal. The deal is now changed. Either you stay or you go. Do you threaten to fire me now? No, I'm telling what I'm prepared to do if you don't cook my menu. That's right. Next time we're talking about Chef, so make sure to watch it before next episode. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Thanks for listening. That's a wrap. Bye. Bye for now. Bye.